Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And as you can see on this angle right over here, we've got the KFA2 3060 Ti EX that we've seen last week. And it's in my opinion, a beast in a very soft disguise. And today we are going to take a quick look at the 3060 Ti regular version. Now they are very similar in terms of performance, but there are slight differences, not only in performance, but also in aesthetics and features. And that's what we are going to cover on this particular video. Be Starting with the size, as we can see, they are a little bit different. Now, in terms of the 3060 Ti, it only has 25 centimeters, while the EX version has almost 30 centimeters. So this is a different stuff in consideration, depending on the case that we are going to use. Now, one more thing that you will notice immediately is that the 3060 Ti regular version has a more clean look and no LEDs. And in terms of size, it only occupies two slots, while the EX version occupies three slots. But the LEDs are one of the things that if you want LEDs, then go with the EX. If you want a more clean, or if your case doesn't have a, a transparent window, then probably this makes more sense. Now, in terms of the fans, they are both very solid, as we have seen on the last video, but the EX version has a dual 102mm fans and 3060Ti regular version has 290mm fan. But what I can say is that they are both very quiet, silent and once again, they are a beast in a disguise because they are so silent, but in terms of performance, they are so great that, in my opinion, and we will do more tests between the 3060 Ti, 37 and 3080, which are the GPUs that I've got at this moment to test out and share with you guys. I'm not really sure yet because they are all awesome GPUs with great technology, but I believe that if we compare price to performance, it's just might, might. I'm not really sure yet, but for the test that I've made, this is the sweet spot. Now, in terms of specifications, I will leave links down below so that you guys can check it out. And for the last review of the EX, which will be right over here on this corner on the YouTube cards. But let me share with you some numbers. And in terms of the memory clock of the EX version, uh, we have 1695, while on the regular version, we have 1665. Now, if we use Extreme Turner to give it a boost, uh, we will reach on the EX version 1700. 110 megahertz while on the regular version we will achieve 1680 and in my opinion this is due only to the cooler being a little bit more effective on the EX than on the regular version but if you ask me hey Robert should I choose the EX for the extra performance that we'll get on the overclock I would say that the overclock is great and it's important and you will get a few more frames per second but not that, that much comparing one to another. So I would go for the EX if we want all the features, LEDs included, which in my opinion are great. Actually, you can see by my background, LEDs is one of the things that I really love on a computer and on my setup. But on the other hand, if your computer already has a few LEDs and you don't really need it on your GPU, then this one might be a great choice but in terms of performance they are on par and let's take a look at some real numbers starting with the first benchmark that i did test out so that we can compare with the 37 and 38 on time spy we got an overall score of 9967 so as you can see very close to the score that we uh, saw on the ex version and this is what we are going to find across all of them now i did a few more tests than i did last video and i will do a few more comparing them so that i can share all the information with you the next test that i did was more targeting the workflow in terms of video editing and video rendering and what i can say is that in geekbench 5 on cuda we will get roughly 120,000, OpenCL 117,000, and on Vulkan 70,000. Now starting with the game benchmarks, I did all of them in 2K. Now in the past with the 38 and 37, I've done 
a few benchmarks and tests on 4K, which is just awesome. But I do believe that for the 3060 Ti, the target is 2K, 2560 by 1440, which is a pleasure to play. And starting with Forza Horizon 4, doing a synthetic benchmark, which gives me results, the exact same tests on every single machine. As you can see, 2K is just too easy for the 3060 Ti. We got a score of 147 frames per second on average, which is just awesome. Moving to Watch Dogs Legion, which is a great game with a lot of effects that the uh, RTX from NVIDIA video will take advantage on ray tracing and DLS yes which is just awesome use the preset on ultra settings so that's not better than this using ray tracing and DLS yes, we can achieve 66 frames per second on average which for this type of game is just awesome we'll get the best of both worlds acceptable more than acceptable frames per second on our gameplay and of course getting all that rich content from the ray tracing technology and dlss yes, which is just awesome right over here so these are the results that i could get on Watch Dogs. Next, I did try Witcher 3, and although I didn't do any benchmark, I wanted to see how it behaved with the graphics on maximum. And what we can see right over there, using 2K resolution with the preset on Ultra, we are very comfortable doing 100 frames per second, which is just awesome for a game such as this one, which is a demanding game, as you guys know. If you want 4K, then we can achieve and lower the frames per second, which is still playable, but in 2K we'll get the best of both. Now I also tried a benchmark that I haven't used before, which is Anno 1800, which basically will render a lot of textures being more and more aggressive. And probably this is a great scenario to test out with the 37 and 3080 so that we can see uh, some differences right over there, which will not be useful only to gaming, but also when we are rendering textures in 3D environment software, which is just awesome. Now the results that I got right over there, 2K resolution as well was 40 frames per second, which is a great result. Then on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is a really nice game, but I'm not honestly very comfortable with it. I did a lot of tests and tried to optimize the game. I was very comfortable playing, but I wanted to use the benchmark as a rule. And what I got right over there was 60 frames per second. But one of the things that I'm not really sure is that on my perception, I was getting more than 60 frames per second but I believe that the limiter somehow was limiting the frames per second according to my screen uh, refresh rate so I do believe that we can get a little bit more of those 60 probably 70s 80s with this resolution and with the preset which was the ultra high but at this moment I will have to hold down and ask you guys to have a little bit of patience I will try more tests and review with you either on Facebook or Instagram or even right over here on one of the next videos. Now, next I did test out um, one more game which was Gear Statics, but as once again, I was not very comfortable with that, so I will not even share the results, but basically you will be able to play not only 2K, but 4K. Now, finally, Minecraft, which is a game that to me personally, since it was released, didn't tell me much, but since I tested out with ray tracing and DLSS, then I changed my mind completely. And if I have enough free time, which is very difficult and usually I don't have, I do appreciate to play Minecraft, which is just awesome. Finally, I did enjoy a little bit of Fortnite. Once again, it's not my type of game, but I do really appreciate to see how the lightning and how the shadows and the water reflections and glass reflections are so much in improved when we enable ray tracing and DLSS to improve both the frames per second and a balance between quality and the speed that we play the game. So guys, basically this is a 3060 Ti, both versions, I will leave links down below, great. This one right over here, a little bit more disguised than this one. This one shows almost everything that she has to offer. But this one right over here, now when we look at it, it looks like a very simple card. And it is a simple card, but behind this, 
a great build quality. Actually, I didn't talk about build quality because at this moment, every KFA2 product that I've tested out, as I mentioned before, has a great build quality. The back plate, the plastics, everything is solid. And after that, looking really uh, smooth and really disguised beneath the hood, it has a great power. And basically, this is it, guys. Hopefully, this video was helpful in some way. Leave your comments down below. I'll try as best as I can and as fast as I can to answer them out. And of course, use those comments to take any questions that you guys have and share with you on the following videos. Like I said, hope that it was useful. And if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there. My name is Roberto George. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.